Guys, there was an article today on Drive, one of the biggest media websites in Australia. In fact, one of the biggest in the world. They said that there were some new spy shots of the Xpeng G6. These are the new spy shots of the new model seen testing in Australia. Now, these guys at Drive um, don't know what model this is, but uh, I do. I can tell you what car this is that it's been testing. I can tell you when it's gonna be on sale. And I can tell you that um, I'm kind of excited, as you can probably tell by my voice. I think this car is going to be really good. I've been waiting for this for quite a long time. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. And this is the Xpeng G6 all-wheel drive. There you go. It's what it is. It's the all-wheel drive, the performance version. And yes, it's going to be available in January. Yeah. So... What's that? Three months? About three months from now, it'll be on sale. It's the new version of the G6. All-wheel drive, new version, which is going to have approximately 500 kilowatt fast charging. I'm not sure the exact numbers. It'll be between 450 to 500 for the Australian market. And it's the, like I said, it's all-wheel drive. It's got the bigger battery. But remember, the new G6 is a little different to the existing G6. The model that I've got, I've got the G6 right now, I've got the rear-wheel drive. It comes with an 87 kilowatt hour NMC battery, but this new model does not come with an NMC battery for the bigger, longer range versions. It's been changed to lithium ion phosphate. So now all G6s, all Xiaopeng or Xpeng G6s come with a lithium ion phosphate battery. That's for the new version. Now, getting to this drive article, let's have a look and see what they had to say. I actually test drove this car myself in China, and I can tell you it's not massively different to the existing G6, but it's definitely an upgrade for sure. A pair of camouflaged G6 vehicles were spotted driving in a convoy in Sydney, showing the updated look of the G6. I do think that the new version looks a little better. On the outside, not much difference really, I don't think. There's a little lip spoiler on the back, a little sort of ducktail lip spoiler on the back. Um, there's new redesigned LED tail lights, new wheels. For me, it doesn't, that neither of those things move the needle at all. The interior though is definitely nicer. Definitely looks more premium on the inside. Plus, like I said, it has faster charging speed. The updated G6 has already been released in Thailand and China, and I think also Malaysia, a few other car markets as well, Indonesia, I believe too, potentially. So that's been on sale now for a, quite a while in those markets. And it's actually X, one of Xpeng's best-selling vehicles worldwide. Inside, the infotainment display is bigger. It's gone from 15 inches or 14.9 inches to 15.6 inches. Not a huge difference, but you will notice the difference. I could tell the difference when I sat in it. And it sits on a redesigned dashboard with the digital instrument cluster now a freestanding item. I actually think that the existing one that I have is better. The, the instrument cluster is integrated into the dashboard. So I'm not sure why they made that change. But anyway, it's been changed. So it's um, sort of a freestanding screen. There's some other changes as well. The materials in the cabin, redesigned front seats are a little... Well, the seats are probably more conforming to your shape they're more um the seat the current seats are fairly flat so the new seats are more kind of a bit more sporty i think you'd say anyhow the battery size in the standard range version right which is the cheaper version the g6 standard range that has increased in battery size not by much it's gone from a 66 kilowatt hour battery to a 68.5 kilowatt hour battery now that option that version is available for sale in australia for fifty four thousand dollars right now um, but this new version gets, yes, yeah, tiny bit bigger battery, 2.5 kilowatt hours bigger. And driving range has increased by actually a fair bit though. It's gone up by 35 kilometers. So it's gone from 435 kilometers, WLTP, that's not CLTC, that's actually more of a realistic range figure, 435 up to 470. And in the testing they did that's been done with this car, um, it gets pretty close to achieving its real world range. So testers have shown it can achieve around 93% of its real world range, even when you drive on highways and freeways. 
which is pretty good. My experience is pretty similar to that after driving for 15,000 kilometers as well. Anyway, there is one slight change. The power has gone down. This is in the, the standard range version, which to be honest is the least, the less popular option. It's gone from 190 kilowatt down to 185 kilowatt from its rear electric motor. Not really gonna, I don't think you're gonna notice any difference though, to be honest. The long range though, the long range battery, like I said, the battery is no longer NMC. It's now a lithium ion phosphate battery. It's gone from 87.5 kilowatt hours to 80.8 kilowatt hours. So the size has decreased by nearly seven kilowatt hours. Driving range has gone down as well. It's the current model, 570 kilometers. So if you want 570 kilometers of range, like I've got in my car, WLTP, and that is pretty, pretty close to realistic to what you can get as long as you don't drive like I do. Um, I know when I drive normally, uh, sedately, I can get pretty close to that range. But if I drive like I'm in a hurry, I won't get it. Anyhow, the range has gone down from 570 down to 525 kilometers WLTP because of the use of that lithium ion phosphate battery and it's smaller. So it's less energy dense being lithium ion phosphate versus NMC and it's a bit smaller. So the range has gone down as a result. 570 down to 525. Yeah, if you don't want to get less range, get the existing model get the long range model that I've got. Anyway, power has increased. Um, it's gone from 210 kilowatt to 218 kilowatt. So an eight kilowatt increase. I don't think you'd be able to tell the difference. To be honest, it's not much. But the performance version that you can see here, right? The performance version combines in the 80.8. So let's just say an 81 kilowatt hour lithium ion phosphate battery with two electric motors, 358 kilowatt in total. That's also going to give you 660 newton meters of torque. Zero to 100 takes 4.1 seconds and it gets 510 kilometers of WLTP range. So the range is only 15 kilometers less than the, than the rear wheel drive. So I think it's a no brainer to get the performance version because I can tell you the performance version is going to be priced hmm, not much different to the existing long range. Not not a lot different, a little bit more, but not heaps. Yeah, anyway, you've got to have that question, don't you? You've got to ask yourself the question, do you want the long range, the existing model with the extra range, or do you want to wait for the performance with less range? It's, um, it's a tough question, really, I think. Now, to give you some um, clarity on the prices, price is $54,800 for the existing uh, rear-wheel drive base model lithium ion phosphate battery and 59,800 for the long range. But both of those options will soon be available. I believe you can get free servicing for five years and there could be some, some deals coming up potentially, maybe. Um, well, yeah, there will be actually. Anyhow, when will this new car be delivered? Well, I've heard it'll be in possibly January, maybe. But anyway, the all-wheel drive is the, the version of the car that Xpeng are really focusing on getting. That's not yet available here in Australia. And so that's what we're seeing in these spy photos here, the all-wheel drive version, which is going to come to market here in Australia within a few months' time. So that's the information. And I can tell you this is not made up. This is not me reading Reddit. This is coming uh, straight from the source. So let me know your thoughts, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.